What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender new feature tutorial. So in today's video, I want to spend a little time checking out the new geometry nodes feature that's going to be featured in the upcoming versions of Blender. So it's currently not a released feature. It's still contained inside of the experimental downloads. So it's a new function that's going to be coming, I believe in the 2.92 version of Blender that's going to allow us to edit geometry using nodes. And so let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so yesterday on the Blender YouTube channel, uh, Pablo put out a new video talking about geometry nodes. Oh. And so you can go through and you can watch that video. I have a link to it in the notes down below. But basically, he was talking through um, how to use the new geometry nodes editor. So this is now available for everyone to download and play with. And so first things first, um, so you can find this by, there's a few different resources in here. There's a link to the blog post. There's a link to the documentation. And then down below, there's a link to the experimental builds of Blender. And so the first thing is you can read this post on the Blender development blog to get a little bit of information about the new node editor. But beyond that, you can also download the sample file and play around with it. And so in order to find that, what you need to do is you need to go to the Blender downloads page. So that's going to be from the Blender website. You want to go to download. And there is an option for experimental down below. And then you don't want the alpha version. What you want is you want to go to the experimental branches. And down at the bottom, there's an option for the geometry nodes branch. So that's what we're going to download in order to be able to um, play around with this. And as always, note that, I mean, experimental obviously means that these are not complete, so I wouldn't use them for any kind of production work, but you can at least use it to kind of get an idea of the way things are going to work. Um, start playing around with this, getting creative, things like that. So the other thing is from this page, you can also click on the button for project page and you can download these sample files. And we're specifically gonna focus on the pebble scattering one for right now. Um, I downloaded the trees and flowers as well. That one seems a little bit more complex. So for this video, I'm gonna stick with these scattering pebbles. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the Blender 2.92 version, and um, we're gonna open up this pebbles scattering example. Just kind of take a look at the way this is working right now. Um, the way that they've got this set up, so there's now a new node editor you can find in the drop down here called the geometry node editor. What the geometry node editor is gonna do is that's where you're gonna be able to access all of these different nodes. And so if we were to do a shift A in here, you can see there's a number of different kinds of geometry nodes that are contained in here. I haven't played around with these too much, but there's a lot of different options in here, especially for things like math and uh, other things like that. So I'm really excited to see what people are gonna be able to do with this. Um, in this case, let's just take a general look at the way this is set up. And so if we look at this, we can get kind of an idea of the way this is starting to work. And by the way, people are starting to put tutorials out on this. So there's a lot of interesting information, but in general, so if we look at this, you can see that this is set up, first of all, with an object, right? So the object info, this is the object that things are actually being scattered on. You can see how this is set to be the GeoGround new um, object. So if I was to click over here, you can see how that's this object right here. Now, if we were to add, let's say a new plane, move it over, we were to remove this out and pick this one, this would spread these on this object instead. And notice how those look fairly different. We'll talk about why in a minute, but this is kind of where we're setting the object that we're scattering these things along. So we're just gonna select this right here and go back and take a look. And so you're gonna notice that what this is doing is this is splitting or this is applying three different kinds of pebbles, right? It's um, it's basically applying the large pebbles, the medium pebbles, and the small pebbles. And those are all being placed in here based on vertex groups, which we can talk about in a little bit. But at the moment, um, basically you can see how this is split into three different groups, right? You've got the one that's, um, that's uh, distributing your large pebbles, the one that's distributing your medium, and the one that's distributing your small. And so you can play around with this in order to get different results. So for example, let's play around with the large pebbles just because they're the most visible. 
So you can see how this is set up to distribute these objects, and it's running through a couple different tools that are affecting the way this is distributed. So I'm gonna jump this over to material preview mode, but if you watch, if we were to adjust some of these, like the scale, for example, this is randomizing the scale of the objects that are outputted, right? So if I was to drag this up, you can see how the large in gets a lot higher, and these pebbles then get larger as well. So you can, you can see how we're using this to set the size of those pebbles. And then over here, once we set the size of the pebbles that have been placed on the surface, then we can set things like their direction. So all of these are basically just setting the randomization of the direction. Notice how I can kind of play around with this in order to set the way these are placed on this surface. So basically what this is doing is this is setting all of the attributes of an object right here. Um, having to do with the location, I mean. But then if you look over here off to the right, you can see how this is now telling us, or this is now going into the point instance. Well, the point instance is where we're setting the object that's being placed, right? So this one, for example, if I was to drag it to the left, it's placing the geo pebble. And so if we look in here, the object is the geo pebble, which is off to the side over here. Well, we could adjust that Instead of being this geo pebble, you could sample maybe this geo pebble. And notice how that's a different object that's being placed in here. So you can use this in order to adjust the object that's being placed. So let's say, for example, instead of having a pebble, that we were to just add a simple cube. So I'm just going to create a cube. We'll just kind of move it off to the side apply our rotation and scale. So now let's say instead of this pebble, we were to switch this out, we could use this in order to randomly place cubes in here instead. So this is where you're gonna dictate this object. And so notice how you can use this in order to kind of dictate the way those are placed. So you can swap out the objects that are being placed on this object. So in addition, it's also taking all of that geometry and it's joining it after the fact. So you can see how it's taking all of this. If you click on it, it's all kind of joined together, right? Well, um, if you look at this, you can see how this is taking all of your pebbles as well as your cube and joining them together and putting them in a group output node. So basically the group output node is just the node that's putting this inside of your 3D model. So you can use this in order to really kind of play around with these randomizations. Um, I'm really excited about this. It's very cool because, and so now, and let's go ahead and switch this back to our pebble. But now let's take a look at how this is being placed on this object, because it's pretty cool the way that they're doing this. So if you click in here and then you go into your object vertex groups, you can see how there's different vertex groups that are showing this where to place the large, medium, and small pebbles. And so you can adjust those using the weight painting function. So we can just do a control tab, go to weight paint, and then click on this, and let's go ahead and jump over into wireframe shading mode for just a second. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see how when you select each one of them, you can paint them in. Well, let's say that I wanted a larger group of large pebbles, maybe we'll say right here in the middle of all this. Well, I'm gonna use my left bracket to make this smaller. Notice how I have large pebbles selected. I'm just gonna paint in an area for large pebbles. Well, notice how wherever I paint this in, I'm getting a lot more large pebbles in that area. So you can use this to dictate different areas where you want the large pebbles to go. So you can use this to paint in new locations for different objects that are being scattered on this face. So we play, we may play around with this in the future with something having to do with like trees or vegetation or something like this. Um, for right now, I just want you to get a general idea of how this works, but these all work the same way, right? So you can see how I can paint this in and get more medium pebbles in the area where I paint over here. So you can use this to really dictate where everything goes with this tool. So I'm really enjoying playing around with this. I'm excited to see what happens with this in the future.
So that's kind of an overview of the way this new feature works. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. If you've tried it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.